Survivor Radio Christian Network. I sure hope um, that you all are um, having a wonderful week thus far. Can you believe that we're already in February? Yes, yes. And tonight's God-inspired theme is victory through God's power. Yes, yes. And the um, scripture that goes with tonight's God-inspired theme comes to us from Psalm 18, verse 35, and it reads, You have also given me the shield of your salvation, and your right hand upholds me, and your gentleness makes me great. Amen. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. All right. Okay. And um, let's see. Oh, yes. Let me um, go ahead and do the uh, birthday shout-outs for February 4th. My following Facebook friends are celebrating birthdays. We have E. Noel Harrington. She is 49 today. Gregson Michael Axmed, Norris Dunson, Jason Lauder, Lisa Ferguson Chevelle, Ty Mapp, Royal Reed is 43. And then we have Terry T.C. Kearney. Now, um, let's see, the following celebrities that um, happen to be celebrating birthdays today. We have uh, Alice Cooper. He is 72. Uh, Lawrence Taylor, he's a football player. He's 61. And then Oscar De La Hoya is 47. He's a um, famous boxer. Amen. So if you happen to be uh, celebrating a birthday today, I just want to say happy birthday. I hope um, that you um, are enjoying your special day. Um, Wishing you uh, many, many more birthdays to come. And, um, you know, yes, yeah, just make it a, 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 a good old day. <laughs> amen, amen. Awesome, awesome. All right. Now, um, let's see. I'm going to throw up my social media platforms real quick. Now, I do have a Facebook fan page and group page under Faith Walk with Joyce White. Uh, Twitter, you can find me as Faith Walk W. Joyce. Okay, and um, on Instagram, I am Lee 48 Now, I spell Lee J-A-Y-L-E-E, and then it's the number 48. Awesome. Whew, okay. Also, um, there is advertising and sponsorship app, um, packages <laughs> available here that can help promote your business product or service on a network that has over 1.7 million downloads, and we do reach people worldwide. So for more information, just send me an email to joywhite, the number 35, at yahoo.com, or hit me up on Facebook. Amen? Amen. Awesome. All right, y'all. It's time um, for me to bring on my guest for this evening. Tonight, we have Gerald and Yvette. And they are part of GYM Ministries. So, without further ado, let us welcome them to the show. Good evening. How are you? Great. How are you? Great. Doing well. There you are. Hey, doing good, doing good. Just wanted to thank you so much for um, agreeing to be guests on the show this evening. Thank you for having us. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Awesome. Let's see. First, um, I wanted to um, ask you all exactly um, what prompted you to start your um, gym ministry? Well, actually, we've been, um, I've been in ministry for a long time. Uh, I was a pastor in Florida, an assistant pastor in Florida for many years. 
we were operating in ministry before our marriage took a turn. Um, and when God asked us to move to Georgia to really kind of pick up where um, where he wanted to strengthen our relationship, strengthen our marriage, and really place us in a new territory. So we moved outside of the Atlanta area, and basically one day my husband realized that God wanted him to share his testimony openly, and with that, um, our ministry for marriages blossomed even though we didn't set out to do marriage, we really just set out to share the testimony and it blossomed from there. Oh, amen. That's wonderful. Yes. Now, um, speaking of your um, husband's testimony, I was um, on your website earlier today and I was reading, um, you know, your story. And, and I, if your husband doesn't mind, w- w- will he share um, his testimony with us this evening? Oh, I have no problem. Awesome. <laughs> what is it okay, that what you ahead. would like to know? Okay. Well, um, <laughs> for a very long time, I was I was bound um, with perversion, lust and perversion, um, drugs, alcohol, um, and we were. And remind you, during all of this time, I was still in the church. Um, but I wasn't um, really walking in what I was supposed to be walking. I was walking in a lot of my generational curses, my bloodline curses, the things that um, caused me to uh, operate out of God's will um, with the perversion, um, masturbation, um, pornography, uh, some stuff, you know, the alcohol was, one of those things that was uh, easy to break, but the other stuff was the drugs, the um, pornography, the um, lust and perversion. That it, it took, you know, ten plus years um, on and off to get, you know, to break it. Going through deliverance, um, fighting, learning how to fight, going through the process over and over again. Um, fighting depression, fighting suicidal thoughts. Um, It was a a, a very, very long process and a hard process at the same time. But once I decided, once, you know, I got delivered and God started working with me and my wife was praying for me, my wife was being a a support that really kind of gave me a a, um, strength to be able to fight, you know, fight for my life, literally, um, and then I was able to fight for my family and fight for my salvation and fight for my deliverance. Um, but it was a it was a very long process of going through it. Oh wow, Amen! Thank you so much, um, you know, for being transparent and uh, sharing your testimony with us. That's that's wonderful because it's just you know proof that God still. Um, heals, delivers, and it sets people free uh, every single day. You've got to trust Yes, him. ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You me. <laughs> yes, awesome. ma'am. So, so um, with your um, ministry, um, so um, do you, like, you have, um, what do you call it, like Facebook Live that you do? Yes, we, we call our Facebook broadcast gym workouts. So Gerald and Yvette Ministries is Jim. We call them 30-minute. Well, they started out being 30-minute relationship workouts. They got a little bit longer. We also put them on YouTube now because there are a lot of people that found out about the ministry and realized they weren't necessarily all on YouTube. So we do snippets of how to make your relationship stronger, how not to give up on a relationship, how to pray for your relationship, we Gerald teaches men concepts about the role of a priest, prophet, and king, and I teach women about being a helpmeet that is suitable. Our ministry also offers counseling. I, I have a master's degree in counseling, and so with our testimony and my background, we have kind of put some things together, and we do online counseling and I, I also have a mentoring program to assist women 
in the transition really from becoming a wife only to a help me suitable. Oh, wow. <laughs> so there's a difference with being just only being a wife and then being um, a help me suitable. Hmm. Yes. That, the the revelation God gave me when Gerald was in the worst part of his struggle, when I was ready to give up, everybody around me said I should give up. My, my flesh wanted me to give up. You know, he was gone. He had left, left us. Our family wouldn't return calls, you know, kept going in and out of um, communication with us and really didn't want the family. He really just was in a, a worldly mindset and didn't want anything to do with the church and really didn't want anything to do with me. One of the things that God shared with me is he wanted me to, to fight. He wanted me to understand spiritual warfare. He wanted me to learn how to assist him. And I kept giving God this list of things that I was, you know, I, I, I was faithful to him and I do this and I have a job and I take care of the house and I take care of his kids. And I gave God all this, these lists of things that I, that I do. And I, I could sense the Holy Spirit saying to me, you are a great wife. Cause I kept saying, I'm a good wife. I'm a, I'm, you know, I'm a proper 31 woman and all these things. And God said, you are a good wife, but what you aren't is a help me suitable what Gerald needs is you to be suitable for where he is right now. And it really, it, it started a journey for me really asking the Holy Spirit every day what to pray, how to pray, how to decree, how to declare over him, even when we weren't together. It, it caused me to be healed from the inside out. I stopped being prideful, stopped being angry, stopped being bitter. And I could hear God tell me how to declare over him, how to cancel some of the demonic assignments, which then caused a peace in our home that he was able to come back to when he was ready. Amen. So you all were um, destined to be together. Um, do you mind sharing um, the story of how you met? Because I, I, I was reading that on the website, and I was like, oh, that's so wonderful. <laughs> well, well uh, briefly, it was um, – um, I, tra- I transferred to a, the high school that my wife was in, and I, when I first met her, I told one of my friends that I was walking with um, that I was going to marry her, and then I walked up to her, and I told her, um, I don't know who you are, but I'm going to marry you, and she looked at me like I was I had five heads and told me that I was, you know, I was a freshman and she was a junior, and so she was like, <laughs> uh, okay, little kid, you okay, um, but... <laughs> You know, at that moment, it began my uh, process of just, so I, I was, I guess, back in the days, if you call it stalking, I was that, because everywhere she went and everything that she did, I was right there. And, but she was my, she was literally my, my lifesaver, because during those times, I was in a bad place uh, once I left school, once I left, um, got home, I was, I always had suicidal thoughts, and during that time, I was always talking to her, so my mind was really occupied. And I didn't realize that until, you know, you know, a couple of years ago, and God revealed that to her, to me. And then coming back out of my situation, that she is, you know, kind of my my lifesaver. She was the one that was praying for me, the one that was, you know, didn't give up on me. She was loving me when I didn't even love myself. She was caring for me when I didn't when I wasn't even uh, being caring for my own self. So she was doing all of these things when everybody else said something different, but she was always doing that, you know, back when we were in high school. She was always, you know, defending me when people would say, why is he chasing you? Why is he always around you? He's so annoying. Can you just, like, get rid of him? And she was like, no, that's my friend. That's my best friend. And it was times where, you know, we're on the phone, you know, all night long. And I know she had a life, but she took that time to, you know, help me, to talk to me, to encourage me, to push me. And I really didn't realize that until, like, you know, we got back into a good place in our marriage. I really I didn't look back on that and see it. I just knew that this was my high school sweetheart and this is who I wanted. 
And so we went on about our, you know, she was a junior and I was a freshman, so she went off of college and I went off to college and did did our things. And I ended up calling my high school looking for a recruit. And they would patch me through to the guidance office, and I didn't know why. But, you know, God works, and, you know, you know how God works. And she, oh, ended yeah. up answering the, she ended up answering the phone. And I ended up talking to her and forgot to recruit the key. And I, uh-huh. recruited my, I ended up recruiting my wife, and, you know, the rest is, is history. And now we're, th- we're together, and when I said I was going to marry you, and I always go back to that. I told you I was going to marry you, and I did. <laughs> Amen. So what would you say are some of the keys um, to um, building a strong marriage? Wow. Um, one main ingredient is to really understand your individual roles. I think ourselves included, uh, many times we have a list of things we want the other person to do for us, the list of things we are expecting from the other person, but we don't spend enough time working on what we bring to the relationship, what we bring to the marriage, and understanding for us as kingdom citizens, as Christians, we have to understand God's expectation of the role of us individually. And I think as I counsel women, as I've gone through it myself, as we do, we do marriage boot camps and, and marriage webinars. Most people know what they want the other person to do, but they don't really have an understanding of what is, is expected of them. So we spend a lot of time really searching the scriptures because a lot of what God asks is not pleasing to our flesh. So oh, yeah. it's much easier to just say, you know, I want this person to do that, or if things don't work out, most people would just blame the other person. And that's really what I did, you know, with Gerald being on on drugs or losing jobs or, you know, costing a lot of money or, you know, just involved in a lot of perverse activities and doing just doing different things that would cause me to feel like I was the victim in the situation. God kept saying, that's my son. And yes, he needs deliverance. And I expect you to pray for him. I expect you to believe in him. This, this isn't who I created. This is, this is a product of generational curses, a product of his choices, a product of sin, but it's not my son. So he really just had me understand, I need you to be able to declare. I need you to be able to decree. I need you to be able to pray. But the expectations of that was very, very difficult because I had a list for myself of what I wanted my husband to be or to do. Um, and and we, we really do help people who are not married prepare for marriage differently, get, get themselves healed, because a lot of what we go through as in childhood, we bring into our marriage relationship. If we haven't gotten that taken care of, unfortunately, we try to get the spouse unknowing unknowingly a lot of times we try to get the spouse to fill a hole that really only God can fill. Yep, that is so true. So true. And, <laughs> re- and really to know that there are sacrifices that have to be made. Each person has to to know that there there's going to be sacrifices that you have to make. And and like she said, coming into the marriage knowing that um it's not about what you can get is about what you're going to give to your spouse. Yes, yes. So do you agree marriages, are they 50-50 or is it like 70-30 or 60-40? It's 100 and 100. Oh, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody has to put in 100% of themselves. They're, they're, we really can't pull back. We really can't hold anything back. I have to give 100% because there are things that God expects of me. And, and God's expectations don't say, if Gerald does this or if your husband does this, then you do that. He's just very clear. Wives, honor your husbands or, or, or husbands, love your wives. But there's, there's not a stipulation that if he doesn't love me, I don't honor him. That's not the way God God deals with things that's not how he his word is written it's like it, it 
all of the Bible verses that many of us know and, and understand and read when he says 70 times 7 is how I want you to forgive or, or loving someone that loves you back. Even a sinner can do that. We, we're, we're faced with those choices, and they are just that. They're, they're choices that we have to make each and every day, and our, and our spouse just gives us the opportunity to be faced with those choices more often. So we have to give 100% of ourselves to submit to the relationship and submit to God in order in order to make it work. And it's hard work. That's why we always say marriage works if you work it. And and, and that that's where the play on the gym concept because you gotta work out marriage. It, it's not easy, but it's definitely worth it. We we honestly have a stronger marriage now than before our trials because we put in the work. Amen. Amen. Yeah, see so you- um, a lot of couples seem to um, divorce real quickly um, when it comes to, um, you know, financial um, struggles. So can you share with us, um, you know, a few uh, things that, that couples can do um, to, you know, keep their marriage strong in the midst of going through um, financial struggles? Well, in the midst of struggle, I can tell you for us, um oddly, you know, I was the one working. I was an assistant principal, so I had a really good job. I was an assistant pastor. I was able to, you know, do some things on the side. And um, really, we had a home, cars, you know, just about everything that, that you would, would want. And, um, and Gerald was in and out of jobs. And God just said I had to trust him. And for for most people, when you're dealing with finances, that's that's really not what you want to hear. It wasn't what it was not what I wanted to hear. You know, he said you have to trust me, which means I don't want you to pull back the finances. Now, I'm not telling everybody that they have to do, you know, the same thing I did, but we have to really trust God's plan for our marriage, and that will often cause us to do things that are that our natural mind you know, wouldn't be able to comprehend. I believe strongly that couples should have joint accounts, but in joint accounts it is a risk, but you have to put the risk in in order to get out what what really needs to come out of a relationship, which is to to put the work in to build a, a trust, to build camaraderie, and to work on the covenant. So for us, I took a, a major hit you know, financially, if you would look at it like it was my money. But God said, you know, that whatever you have belongs to the union. So it's not your money and his money. It's the money that belongs to the union. And honestly, when I started, you know, complaining to God about what he was asking me to do, he said, I provide for you. I I opened the door for for your job. I opened the door for promotions. I I made a way for you to get through college, all of these things. So he said, you're going to put all of it in so that, he can be delivered so that he can be set free so that the union can work and I'm going to and 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 then he's able now to use us as examples of even when you go through some things even if you lose you lose material things we came out better and stronger as in a in our relationship and that was more important Ger- Gerald's life his salvation his deliverance was more important to God than material things amen wow so do you um, have any spiritual boot camps coming up um, uh, anytime soon? Yes. Actually, we're getting ready um, to end of February. We're getting ready to go to um, Houston the 21st. The 21st and the 22nd we will be in Houston. Um, then we're scheduling um, March. We're having a, um, a marriage retreat. On the twenty, I think it's the twenty seventh. I'm not for sure. I don't have it right in front of me those dates. Um, but March we're having a, a retreat, a marriage retreat in Tennessee, and the following month we will be in April. The seventeenth and eighteenth we'll be in Chicago. Oh wow, that's a good spot. So Chicago. right now we we've, we've done six. <laughs> Six boot camps um, from Tallahassee, Alabama, Florida, Florida. Uh, we were in Baltimore 
Um, and so we're we're God is having us to go to twelve cities, twelve states to um, to do boot camps. And so we're we're just going wherever God says go, wherever He directs us to go, we go. And and God just shows up and shows out. We have a mentoring yeah. program. Um, my mentoring program that works with help me sharing and teaching them spiritual warfare. We we center our the locations around where we have concentrated number of members in the mentoring program. So a lot of a lot of the time that's how we determine the cities. So we just left. Sarasota Bradenton area because we had several members in the central and southern Florida area. And like Gerald said, we did Tallahassee because we have several in in Jacksonville, Tallahassee area. We were in Huntsville, Alabama, Fayetteville, North Carolina, Baltimore, Maryland. We are headed to, to Houston, which is great. We have several members in Texas. This. Um, we will be in California in June, and our plans are to be in New York in May, but we haven't locked down the dates as of yet. Oh, wow. All right. California. <laughs> yes. That's wonderful. <laughs> so um, you have um, co-authored a book called Bent But Not Broken? Yes. So we are finalizing our our story is bent but not broken. God gave us that title even before we moved to Georgia. Um, basically, the enemy tried to break us. He, he bent us definitely because we we were at the brink of being broken. But but our our marriage relationship, our covenant, our friendship was not broken. It definitely was bent, but it was not broken. So it's the, it's our story. A lot of um, background of the things that Gerald struggled with and things that he went through growing up, which really led to, you know, the alcohol abuse, the drug abuse, the suffering from depression, the dealing with with the um, a lifestyle of perversion and the, the things that come out of that. He was also um, a, a athlete, so there's a lot that comes with being a professional athlete, a star athlete. And, and he just had to battle so many things. And so it really tells his background and then the story of our relationship and what God shared with me at, at, after becoming a help meet suitable and how that really brought him into a life of deliverance. And now through spiritual warfare, how we maintain our deliverance. So it really is our story together. Amen. Awesome. Awesome. So um, as far as um, using spiritual weapons, um, um, you know, so that you can, um, you know, be delivered from, um, what was I I'm trying to say, like addictions and things like that, um, what um, particular um, weapons might somebody use? Well, we really, we really teach a lot about, utilizing the word of God because God says in in the whole armor that the sword of the spirit is the word of God. And and many times we we know of people getting hands laid on them and and people praying for them. And those are amazing weapons as well. But, But one thing we don't always use really is the word of God and understanding that we have spiritual authority to cast out devils. And so I had to learn more about casting out devils, about decreeing and declaring is a weapon, worship is a weapon, praise is a weapon, our testimony is a weapon. And we have to real, realize that if we do the same thing, we're going to get the same results. So if, if, we, if we've only prayed at a, at a certain level, if we've only, you know, um, attended church and, and we've done some things but we're still battling, we have to really step up our game. It's, it's, it's the equivalent. I tell our clients a lot of times it's the equivalent of battling someone with a knife and in and, and certain battles that might be enough. But if you're battling someone who has nuclear weapons and you have a knife, it's just not going to work. So we have to not only understand the various weapons that God provides for us, but when to use them and how to use them strategically. Amen. Wow. That's, yeah. That's some good stuff there. So as far as um, scriptures, are there um, any particular scriptures um, 
you could um, share um, concerning, you know, married couples, you know, certain scriptures that they should um, stand on? We we believe, honestly, and it sounds cliche, but really, you know, the scripture, if you break it down, we don't do a really good job of truly understanding it. You know, uh, the scriptures on forgiveness, forgiving 70 times 7 is one thing that God continuously shared with me. And, and understanding that we get the opportunity to com- completely forgive all the time. So so it's, it's forgiveness, not in a sense where you just let something go, but truly a person gets a fresh start every time you forgive them. So it's treating them like nothing ever happened. And those scriptures, most people are very familiar with them. They know you're supposed to love unconditionally, but we don't we don't truly practice it. I know I didn't until God really had to push me into the word. And he said, Yvette, you're, you're preaching it, but, but you have to realize I mean this. I, I really do mean that I want you to love unconditionally. I really do mean that I want you to forgive when, when you forgive and you have to let it go. True forgiveness is, is, is not just, you know, saying, saying the word, but really giving the person the opportunity to feel like, they're not going, it's not, they're not, you're not holding them to their previous behavior or their previous act or, or what they've done. And it is not easy. It's something that nope. I have to continuously work on. It's something that I work with the, the, my, our clients and our, our mentees. We work on it con- constantly, but it's, it's God's expectation. And a, lot of, and a lot of it is, and a lot of it is that, like she said, you, we know these scriptures, but we allow our, our emotions and our flesh to take us out of the scripture. We want to use it when it's time to use it, and then we want to use, we do not want to use it when we really and truly need to use it because our emotions take over or our flesh take over. But the scriptures that she just, you know, unconditional love is very, yeah. very important. To forgive is very, very important because that's why you have to forgive 70 times 7, that was in a day because those things are going to happen yep. in your day. And so you have yep. to be prepared. It wouldn't be in there if it wasn't something that was going to happen. Amen. Definitely. So what um, uh, what do they call it? Gifts of the Spirit um, has God imparted into you, um, Yvette? I operate as an apostolic teacher, and uh, I'm very, very prophetic, so that has, has truly been a, a blessing to me, one um, that I utilize a lot in, you know, the boot camps. I, I love to teach and train. We both are imparters. We impart a lot, you know, we lay hands on and, and operate in, in that gift, so that has been truly a blessing for us. Amen, amen. And what do you feel um, is your God-given purpose? We're finding now that uh, so much of our our purpose is exactly what we're doing. We knew that we were meant to, we had had a lot of prophecies even before our separation um, and, and difficulties. We'd had a lot of prophecies about, you know, going all over the, all over the country to, to preach and teach and, and, and prophesy. But we're realizing now that a lot of our, our, our God-given purpose is to help people understand the roles. For me, the roles of a helpmate, for Gerald, the roles of a priest, prophet, and king, and then to be apostolic covering for those who have gifts that um, are, are being trained, that are that have gifts that need impartation. We love to train in, in gifts because a lot of people that have struggles in their marriage or struggles in their family or even, even we, we have a lot of people who aren't married who would desire to be married and really it's a difficult you know, journey when you want to be married and you don't, you you lose out on focusing on your gifts and your calling when those when those family, marriage, and and desiring to be married problems hit. So as we work on marriage and marriage ministry, we end up as people get healed, as relationships get restored, we actually end up seeing people 
operate more in their gifts and in their calling, stirring up their purpose, training them in the prophetic, training them as prophetic worshipers, training them as apostolic teachers and trainers. We, we end up seeing it come to pass because they're not distracted, and that's what the enemy was trying to do, to distract people through through marriage, through their family, through, through difficulty, um, to keep them from operating in their purpose. Yep, he surely does. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> so um, explain why um, um, counseling is important for, for a couple if they, you know, were wanting to get married. Why is it important um, for them to go through marriage counseling um, before actually, um, you know, stepping into a marriage? Well, for, for premarital counseling, it's so important to get individual healing first to know what you bring from your childhood, to know what things you're expecting and and maybe those expectations are or are not appropriate. So we we worked a lot with people to get their personal deliverance. There's so many people struggle with, you know, either daddy issues, mom issues, you know, failed relationships in the past, and we bring all of that to the table. Marriage actually is, is hard enough when you come to the table whole. But but most people don't come to the union whole. They come to the union with with a lot that, that really is what we consider baggage, for lack of any other term. And, and so now you have the baggage on one end coming together with baggage on the other end, and it just, it just collides and becomes a disaster. So we really encourage individual healing and deliverance and then to teach and train people on understanding their biblical role and and knowing what the expectation is for themselves. If each individual person understands their expectation and and lines it up with God's will and God's word, then you come together and and you have so much more um, strategy. You have more focus in a relationship. And we do work with with couples, and it's, it's amazing to see what we know now, we wish we knew before we got married, so we love to impart that into people who aren't married yet so that they can have a, a fresh start and a better start to it, to their union. Amen. Definitely. Woo. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so um, when you do your um, gym relationship workout, is it a certain um, – like time period, do you like do it once a week or a certain time? Um, you put it either on uh, Facebook or YouTube. Um, well, we do a lot of we do our live kind of like when we have a a time, but God when God really presses us to to we have He put something on us and He wants us to to get it out. He wants us to talk about it. Um, so we just because our schedule for our counseling is really really um, packed. And but when God presses and God says, "I need you to get this out," we we sometimes will have an individual um, message to go out, or we'll have a a, a a gym message to go out together. And they're not um, not on a time schedule or a date schedule. Um, it's really when God presses us to put it out, and so He's really pressing us lately that we have to get some stuff out because he has a message that he wants to get out to his people. And, and he's, we are, we're honored to be vessels for him to be able to be used, especially for this this, um, this lane, this metron, this, the, the marriage and the family. It's very important. God has a, a plan for marriages. He has a plan for the family, and he wants it to be restored. He wants it to be healed. He wants the, the individuals to have a, a personal relationship with him. And so he's using our testimonies. He's using, you know, the, the gym messages because we're on um, Facebook Live. We on, we have a YouTube channel. We have um, um, uh, our website. Uh, we have media stuff on that. And so we have, we give resources uh, and things that to be able to help um, marriages all around the world. And so it's very important that that we, you know, we do what God asks us to do and when he asks us to do it because we truly are led by the Holy Spirit 
and whatever God says and God wants us to do, that's just what we do. Amen. Awesome. So how can um, we find you on social media? On social media, many of the broadcasts are on my page, so it's Yvette Fenton, Y-V-E-T-T-E. And um, we have a a gym page, so it's Gerald and Yvette Fenton. We have that page also, and we put the broadcast on that. On YouTube, it's Gerald and Yvette Ministries, and that's what we have. That's where we place all of our our broadcasts. We do them on Facebook Live, and then we put them onto YouTube. Right now, we don't do them directly onto YouTube, but we do them on Facebook Live, and then go from there. But of course, our our Website is GeraldAndYvette.com, G-E-R-A-L-D-A-N-D-Y-V-E-T-T-E.com. And under the media tab, there are sample broadcasts. We have webinars available specifically for the help needs. I love to do teaching and training, so there are several webinars that I've already completed with different topics. And so those are available on the website for people who like to have teaching. Um, many people actually use them similar to audio books because it's, it's three hours of teaching, so it's almost like I'm teaching and training, like you have a book on a particular subject for the help meet. I wrote a book and workbook set, Help for the Help Meet, which is really my journey to the revelation of being a help meet suitable. And then the workbook assists you in doing things for, preparing for a spouse or doing things for and declaring over your spouse to to really shift yourself from being the the concept of a wife to a concept of a helpmate. Oh wow, that's awesome! <laughs> so you have to prepare yourself to be a wife. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> yes. That's good. <laughs> Amen. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Well. I definitely want to um, thank you um, for coming on the show this evening. Um, it's been a, a real pleasure, um, you know, getting to learn about your ministry and to hear about, um, you know, your, your testimony and, um, you know, how God was able to, um, you know, keep your marriage um, together and, you know, make it strong. I'm, I'm just so Thank you um, so much. Happy. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> you're welcome. So um, have a blessed, powerful, and productive week. Thank you, thank you, you so too. Much. You too. Oh, thank you. I shall. <laughs> so have a good night. <laughs> you too. Bye-bye. Okay. <laughs> Bye-bye. Amen. Woo. I just love talking with them. Wow, wow. So definitely um, check out their um, – their um, gym workout, y'all. Um, I um, had a chance to listen to at least um, a couple of them myself. Um, so, um, yeah, yeah, check them out. Check them out. Amen. Okay, it's time now for the song I have chosen. Um, my good friend Gordon Mills um, sent me a few uh, new, you know, he calls it new music. And the song tonight is going to be Testify. And it's by Ruth Andrea Featherstone. You are listening to Faith Walk with Joyce White on the Survivor Radio Christian Network. Be back after the song. I know what you're going through. And because I've been there too. It was only by the grace of God that I'm here today. That Jesus Christ is the only way I should be dead, sleeping in my grave But God told us to behave I've got a testimony You never stop amazing me How your love just don't stop Thank you. 
Broadcast first on Blaze One Radio. All you have to do is go to www.blazeoneradio.com and you can listen anytime by clicking on my shows tab or you can um, hear the replay 8 a.m. every Sunday morning. Yes. Also, um, I'm rebroadcast on positivepower21.org and as well as Spreaker.com. Now, Spreaker is spelled S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com. Amen? Awesome, awesome. Yay, yay. I love it, I love it. All right. Okay, um, this is like the first Tuesday um, of the month, and um, my good friend, Miss Christina Lockett, who comes, um, her, her show is next at 10 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. She's doing her hot topic show, y'all. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. So um, you can listen to her show by, um, you know, dialing the number that you dial to listen to my show, which is 563-999-3084. And, um, you know, check out all the other shows that are on this Survival Radio Christian Network because we do radio. (laughs) Amen. Awesome. All right. Um, Yep. So I hope um, you all – Definitely enjoyed the show. I know I um, enjoyed my wonderful guests, and I want to thank them again, uh, Gerald and Yvette Benton. Thank you so much um, for coming on the show and being transparent with the audience. Okay, y'all. Well, that does it for me this um, fine Tuesday. Um, hope you all um, continue to have a, a, a productive week. Um, Remember to tune in again next week, and let me just end by saying, live simply, love generously, care deeply, speak kindly, and leave the rest to God. You all have a blessed, powerful, and productive night or week. Yes, both. Good night. Sometimes it seems like you can't find your way. Take a step and walk by faith. Now step to the right, one time. Right. Twice to the left and make it nice. Come on, to the, to the front, front and take it back. Word on the right, the pain right. Wait a hand, hand. Let, the right let the devil know. Let the devil know that you got it. Oh, yeah. Take the faith and walk. Take the faith and walk. Now,